God bless fantasy football with Sasha Durkin, Andrew Rogers, Waiver Wire Tuesday. And we are slated to give you our favorite ads of the week. Plus, we'll do a little short segment of burn and turn. But before we get there, let's talk about how fantasy football went in week one for the God bless fantasy football league. I did come away with a win. I don't think I should have, but I did. Thank goodness I played the team that scored the second lowest point total this week and that was team hail varsity i squeaked out a win i'm still one to know i'm in fourth place but the same can't be said for my counterpart to my left i'm so annoyed <laughs> she <laughs> had the third highest scoring total this week and didn't win because she faced off against the team that scored the most points. But hey, that's fantasy football. That happened to me in two other leagues. So, Sasha, I feel your pain. But in this league, for example, I don't. Well, <laughs> screw you. Uh, no, I, I uh, was watching this all day. As you know, well, some things happened locally uh, on Sunday that distracted me from paying attention what to all the games. I could have watched I, a head coach at a uh, local football program may or may not have been fired but oh, uh so I, <laughs> I didn't pay as close of attention as i could have but i was on my phone the whole time and i was at one point ahead and then you know sometimes you just have a player pop off for 30 points <laughs> and it screws you over and that was justin jefferson yes. who she's referring to jalen hurts had yes. a big day too for pat and jt and Devonte adams as well put up a 20 bomb on you mm -hmm. you only had two players eclipse that 20 point mark uh -huh. jonathan taylor expected kyler murray expected mm -hmm. your other players didn't really ball out they really didn't and I, even on my bench like nobody so i didn't feel bad about who i played it was just yeah yeah, but I was scored. What's most important is not talking about us, but talking about you and how we can help you win your leagues. And the obvious ad this week, my favorite ad of the week, is somehow one step below than Curtis Samuel. Don't see it. Jeff Wilson Jr., he's 18% mm -hmm. roster owned, and he's the clear number one now. Elisha Mitchell out for eight weeks with an MCL sprain. And that's at least eight weeks. You never really know what that recovery process is yeah. going to be like. He's always injured. I don't know why I bought back into the Elijah Mitchell train. This guy got hurt last year. He gets hurt years before. I just can't do it anymore, Eli. I yeah. can't. Stay <laughs> so healthy sorry. or stay off the field because you took my early draft pick. But that's beside the point. There's two rookie backs behind Jeff Wilson Jr., more than likely aren't going to make an immediate role. And I, I, I mean, look, one was a healthy scratch. Mm -hmm. The other one was third on the depth chart. They weren't even looked at at all in week one. Jeff Wilson, clear number one. Those rookies are going to have to grow up fast in order yeah. to bite into some of that apple that Jeff Wilson's going to be eating by himself. Don't take into account Jeff Wilson's day. If you're going back and looking at the stats, that was a monsoon in Chicago. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, they were straight up just water sliding down the down to the end zone. It was it was football kind of fun is to watch. fun. It it can be. Yeah. Sure. Sure. I think that uh, I don't like agreeing with you, but for this one, uh, given the injury and then just you know reading through what Yahoo had to say and the increase in touches and and all of that, I I agree with you on this one. Well, the expectation is to see him in the running back 24 to 32 category. Mm -hmm. That could be much better next week against the Seahawks, who we saw Monday night could not stop either running back in the Broncos backfield. Javante Williams had 19.8 points in a PPR league. He averaged 6.1 yards per carry and had 11 catches on top of that. Melvin Gordon had 7.2 points in PPR. Keep in mind the second stringer on that list. He had 4.8 yards per carry, which is still fantastic and only had two catches. But just seeing how I saw the running backs, if they didn't cough up two balls within like three yards of the goal line, they each would have added six points to their fantasy day. There's no doubt. No doubt in my mind that Jeff Wilson Jr. will have a big week next week. And if you have the number one waiver, number two waiver, if, if the one, two pass and you have the third, you burn it. You burn it on Jeff Wilson. Uh, I actually put down that if you're sitting pretty high in the waiver wire list to add Curtis Samuel. Let's hear why. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I think that you'd be making the best decision just because uh, just looking at his touches, he caught eight for 11 for 55 yards, one touchdown for Washington on Sunday with an additional five carries for 17, and then led the team in receptions, had seven, touch seven touches on just the opening drive for the Commanders. 
Now, I go back and look at Curtis Samuel's stats, and he had a very good 2020 with Carolina. Mm -hmm. He only started five games, but he did manage to squeak out 851 receiving yards that year. He went to Washington last year, didn't do much. He was injured, and now this year, I, I just... I struggled to buy into Curtis Samuel this early. I know he had a big day. Carson Wentz yeah. is a huge upgrade at quarterback there than Taylor Heineke last year right. and some quarterbacks that preceded. Carson Wentz will spread the ball around. He will find ways to give it to Scary Terry. He will find mm -hmm. ways to give it to Curtis Samuel. He'll find ways to give it to the rookie, Jahan Dotson. Mm -hmm. But I just... At this point, week one, I'm not panicking. I'm not yeah. burning my top waiver on a receiver, especially if I don't need one, just because of the day that he had. Everybody can have a big day at any point. He saw 11 targets, eight catches, 55 yards. He caught a touchdown. He also fumbled. But – Keep in mind what Jahan Dotson did, too, as a rookie in his first game. He had 40 yards receiving. He was highly touted coming out of camp, and he had two touchdowns. Yeah. So I'm not saying you burn your top waiver on Jahan Dotson either. I just I can't get behind putting it on Curtis Samuel just yet. I could be wrong, though. Curtis Samuel <laughs> could end up being the best receiver in the league. Who knows by year's end? Yeah, you don't. And that's the hard thing about like the first week is that it's really difficult to decipher how the rest of the seat. I mean, if you have a couple games, sure. But if I needed a receiver, I would probably go with Curtis Samuel. I like Devin Duvernay a lot as a receiver on the waiver wire today. Devin Duvernay, the clear number two in Baltimore, and he got looks despite the run first offense. He caught four balls. He had over 50 yards. He also had two touchdowns. I know I'm like really going after guys that have two touchdowns, yeah. I, and I may be freaking <laughs> out a little too gang. much there, but – He's not the biggest guy in the league, and that's another reason why I like him in this offense because Mark Andrews and Rashad Bateman really draw some of the better DBs and yep. uh, the middle linebackers, of course, for Mark Andrews. But when I look at a guy on the outside like Duvernay and the way that he was hit by Lamar Jackson, I love it. Despite being so-called quiet, because that's how – um, Yahoo, ESPN, all of the fantasy league insiders labeled Mark Andrews and Rashad Bateman. They had quiet days. Uh, they still were very productive in this game, but right. Duvernay was the most productive. And because of his speed, I love his work on the boundaries. And I really think that he's going to be a productive fantasy option this year with a guy like Lamar Jackson throwing you the ball. Yeah, I didn't have too much to add to that um, just because, I mean, what Andrew just said tells the story, in my opinion. Duvernay, I didn't look this up, and I should have. He is only 32% rostered. So yeah. there's there's room to add a guy like him to your lineup, and he provides great depth for you. Another yeah, guy I sure. like, and I can't believe that he's available in as many leagues as he is, is James Robinson. So after owning James Robinson last season, I don't know why I got sucked into the ETN conversation. I mean, just when you write off J-Rob, he pulls you back in. 19.9 fantasy points in PPR. He had 11 rush attempts, 66 yards, and a rushing touchdown. He also caught one pass in the red zone for a touchdown. So yes, he had two touchdowns. But ETN... From the start of the season, because uh, J. Rob was his his status was uncertain because he came in on the pup list, but then he avoided the pup list, mm -hmm. and what that means is physically physically unable to perform. And then he participated through training camp, but still, all the hype was backing Travis Etienne, and rightfully so, a first round pick a couple of years ago, James Robinson if I'm correct, was undrafted coming out of Illinois State. Uh, I could be wrong there, but I'm pretty sure he was undrafted. He out-touched ETN 13 to 8. He also out-touched ETN in the red zone, and he lost red zone scores to J-Rob in this game. ETN did, however, drop an easy touchdown. I saw that with DeAndre Swift a year ago. I wouldn't freak out about that. DeAndre Swift is awesome this year. <laughs> and he was overthrown on another potential touchdown. He looked explosive, but... As far as I saw, James Robinson was the clear lead back. He was the yeah. operated as the clear number one in week one. Over the next six weeks, this is what the Jacksonville running backs have to go up against. Philly's defense, 
which is the worst against the run. Mm -hmm. Houston's defense, which is the third worst against the run. And the Giants defense, which is the eighth worst worst against the run. If I'm looking at a guy that's only about 60% owned in leagues, I am snagging James Robinson if I can. If I have a top waiver pick, that's what I'm doing. If he's yeah. unowned, if Travis ETN owner, if you did not pick up James Robinson off the start of the year to handcuff your team, I'm picking him up right in front of you. Well, and the reason I put the player that I'm about to talk about on my list is because I'm not at the top of the list. I'm middle of the pack towards the bottom. So I put down Rex Burkhead for a running back. I Like I said, I'm like sixth now in the pecking order. I'm not bitter about dropping it all from week one, but you could pick up a dude like Rex. Uh, he led the Texans backfield with 19 touches in their game against the Colts. Um, your boy played 71% of the snaps for Houston. Okay. <laughs> so boy. the only downside may be that he only averaged 3.4 yards of carry, but I trust Rex Burkhead. I am still on the, don't burn your top waiver on Rex Burkhead train. You could if you have a back end waiver, especially early on in the season, mm-hmm. because after watching Damian Pierce in his first game, they they said he's going to be our starter. He's going to be the lead back. But then I was like, why am I seeing more Rex Burkhead than Damian Pierce? Uh-huh. Not to say that Pierce was the most effective running back on the field. Damian Pierce will eventually take over that backfield and he just needs times. He just needs reps in mm-hmm. the backfield. He needs that. He needs that game experience at the NFL level. He was a a great addition to that roster coming out of Florida. Mm-hmm. He will take over week five, week six. But if you're looking but for while a guy, you're waiting. if you're looking for a guy right now, I mean, it's disgusting. But why not Rex Burkhead? <laughs> why not? Disgusting. Oh my goodness! Just Rex Burkhead just gives me the chills. Ah. Uh. And I know I'm in an area that probably doesn't like to hear that, <laughs> but Rex Burkett is ugh, not right. for me. Okay, but okay. I did start him last week or last year for one week when I absolutely needed him, and he went off. So Rex hey. Burkett, I, hey. I low key kind of love you. Um, so I, you know, if, if you have a seven, eight, nine, ten waiver, why not Rex Burkett? Your waiver doesn't matter at that point, right? That's what I'm saying. If you have such a back end way, if you don't have a one, two, three, I mean. I look at, yeah, just three. I mean, maybe one, two. If I don't have the second waiver and I don't really care who I add after week one, I'll burn it. Yeah. Like, you know, if if I know somebody's going to use their waiver on Jeff Wilson and I have the number two waiver, guess what? I'm not using a waiver this week because now I have the number one waiver for whenever something else bad happens. Yeah, that's a good strategy. So I don't need the Curtis Samuels, the Rex Burkheads, the James Robinsons, the Devin Duvernays at this point. If I have the number two waiver and I know number one is taking somebody off the board, I'll still put it in for Jeff Wilson in case dude doesn't like Jeff Wilson so that anybody behind me doesn't get it. Or any other player that you may have your eye on. Nobody else I I would put attention to. Khalil Herbert is another one of my favorite ads this week. I think he's in the 40s, uh, 41, 49. Sounds about right. Gosh, I should have put that down on my sheet of paper here. Um, but David Montgomery struggled. 41. 41% owned. Thank you. But again, don't look too much into that because right. the field conditions in Chicago were unplayable. Yet they played the in Chicago and won. And if you had Chicago money line, good for you because they were like plus 255 going into that matchup. Khalil Herbert did out touch David Montgomery 21 to 10 and oh I'm sorry I'm sorry switch those around David Montgomery did out touch Khalil Herbert 21 to 10 he out snapped Khalil Herbert 38 to 17 mm-hmm. however he did play better because he had nine rushes for 45 yards and a touchdown he had five yards per carry if you can do math opposed to Montgomery's 1.5 yards per carry mm. that's also gross <laughs> provides <laughs> Khalil Herbert provides standalone RB3 value at this point I was high on him coming into this season I knew they were going to utilize him I didn't know how much I still know David Montgomery is the surefire option for no sure. matter what the automatic flex play at this point I, I i could eat my own words midway through the season but at this rate he will continue to cut into david montgomery's workload and there's just no reason not to have this guy as a bench stash currently okay well all i wrote down for this one was i just don't have a good feeling about this and i'm just going off my gut sometimes you have to listen all to right it. <laughs> great work sasha you're welcome <laughs> 
<laughs> my last one on the list, and I'm only going to give five, and then we'll get into a quick burner turn segment. And Sasha, if you have one more, feel free to add that in. But I love Julio Jones this week as well. Chris Godwin out a few weeks with a hamstring injury, but this is another injury that always lingers. Yeah. All season long. We saw it with Michael Thomas. We've seen it with other players in the NFL. This type of injury is something that never goes away. The hamstring injury, unless you have um, months off like yeah. you do in the off season, you can never really recover from a hamstring injury. You're just going to keep playing through that injury whenever it becomes time that, hey, I'm ready to go. You're not right. really ready. You're, you're like 85% ready to go. You're not right. 100% back. So that's why I like Julio Jones essentially the rest of the year because – not only did he have a great week one, but he has Tom Brady leading the charge. And Tom Brady, I don't know how this happens, but he always revamps athletes. It's like yeah. old receivers always end up in Tom Brady systems and they go nuts or, or have good years. They may not go nuts, but Antonio Brown was awesome when he was a Patriot, not a buck. He was yeah. awesome when he was a Patriot. I looked at Randy Moss whenever he made his way to the Tom Brady yeah. uh, offense. He still continued to be great. Hall of Famer. And now I looked at even other guys like Josh Gordon, the hype yeah. that he had when he got there. Now, you know, he couldn't stay off the grass, but he still did a great job uh, standing on the sidelines on the grass. <laughs> so, you know, Julio Jones is just that type of guy that is a Hall of Famer, is still big enough, strong enough to make an impact. He I, I, next gen sats had him reach a speed of 20.62 miles that. per hour yeah. on a 48 yard catch in this game. It's almost like he, he drank some of Michael's secret stuff and he's just back to 2015 Julio Jones. And uh, I'm, I'm also seeing guys compare him to the role of Robert Woods when he played for the Rams. So all of that excites me in a player like Julio Jones. I know he's, he's had some injuries that have, you know, continued to follow him after stop after stop here. Put the put everything like that aside. Julio Jones is still Julio Jones, and he looked like Julio Jones on right. Sunday. Yeah, um, I actually had down Jarvis Landry, um, Saints wide receiver, caught seven of nine for 114, leading the team in catches, yards, and targets, and could be good uh, grab for anybody lower middle of the pack type of a situation. Understandably, um, ultimately, Thomas is probably going to outproduce Landry on the field, but he might be someone like you mentioned earlier to stash on your roster for later in the season. It's a great point that you brought up Jarvis Landry because let's get into burn or turn. Jarvis Landry is an absolute burn for me as well. He had 114 receiving yards in week one. Michael Thomas, of course, there. Chris Olave had a great week too. Yeah. So the, all three receivers played really well next to Jameis Winston. I'm a burn there too. Uh, Curtis Samuel, burn or turn? Burn. Turn. Did see 11 <laughs> targets that receiving touchdown in 55 yards, but I'm still turning right now. Jahan Dotson, burn or turn? Uh, turn. Burn. Mm. burn okay. burn your waiver if you have a back end i like that it, it, i guess if you have a back end on curtis samuel i don't really care you do whatever you want uh Taysom hill burn or turn uh burn turn Ugh. Taysom hill Ugh. they're talking about him being a tight end come well, on i i understand i understand that part of it still would probably burn he had one big rush and then he ran a touchdown and stop it Taysom hey. hill turn what if you don't have anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> if he gets put as a tight end on the roster in fantasy football, I'll lose my mind. <laughs> uh, Cleveland, you heard it here first. Cleveland defense, burn or turn. Keep in mind, they're playing the Jets this week. I have it as a burn. I have them turning, and here's why. I don't ever burn on a defense. Well, yeah. Ever. There's Unless, always another defense out there that has a favorable matchup where you don't have to burn your waiver. Right. Well, okay, okay. I could see that. But, but I would, in my scenario, it's a lock if I'm you put selfish. Cleveland's defense yeah, in there. Yeah, it's a lock. Yeah. Chase Claypool, burn or turn? Mm, turn. I'm a big burn on Claypool. Claypool, 6'4", playing the slot this year. He is a huge body. <laughs> and Sasha's throwing up fisticuffs <laughs> over here. He's a huge body. He had a big impact in his rookie season. He took a step back last year, but he's going to get back to full form. He didn't He didn't do amazing work in week one, but I still like him. He's 70% owned roughly in all leagues. I like that. Rex Burkhead, burn or turn? Huh. Burn. <laughs> Turn. <laughs> Turn. <laughs> Damian Pierce will take over soon. That's fine, but not right now. <laughs> That's a good point. Robbie Anderson, burn or turn? Ooh, burn. 
He did have one big TD that saved his day. He had a deep shot by Baker Mayfield, but Robbie Anderson is one of the most inconsistent wide receivers out issue. there. Yeah. DJ Moore didn't have his biggest day. I think Baker gets him more involved. I'm turning on Robbie Anderson at this point. Jameis Winston, burner turn. Mm. Mm. Burn. Yeah. Yeah, I like that too. I like Jameis Winston. I like the burn. Great group of wide receivers. He had 269 for two passing touchdowns. He didn't throw a pick, which is shocking. (laughs) Jameis Winston not throwing the ball to the other team. He realized that his team was wearing white that day. Yeah, which is good on him. Were they wearing white? I can't remember. He knew his team colors that day. (laughs) He liked to throw to the other team uh, a couple of years ago. Yes, he did. Isaiah Pacheco, burn or turn? Turn. I'm turning on him too. You know, Clyde Edwards Alaire had a big day, and Pacheco only ended up having a big day because the Chiefs were having a big day and he produced in garbage time. Yeah. Um, and my honorable mention here before we close this one out, <laughs> Marcus Mariota, burn or turn? Turn. Marcus Mariota. I'm no. not saying you burn a waiver on this guy, Mm-mm. but hear me out here. Oh gosh, here hear me go. out. <laughs> If you wait the waivers and get him in free agency to back him, I doubt anybody burns a waiver on Marcus Marriott. I doubt it. But he was 20 of 33 for 215 in this game. I was very critical when we went on our week one show and Cam can attest it at Hale Varsity Club. I was critical of how Marcus Mariota made his way out of the pocket. I just did not think he had it in him anymore. And he still ended up rushing for 72 yards and a touchdown. I think he had like 11 rush attempts too. You know, the way I look at it, the Falcons are going to be down in most games. So he's going to have to throw the ball to win games. That makes Kyle Pitts. That makes Drake London a juicy ad as weeks go on. But Marcus Mariota pulls my honorable mention for burn this week because of those reasons he's losing games he's forced to throw i was shocked how well he moved out of the pocket i i I don't know he's nine percent owned are you gonna be on my train or not i I (laughs) I have a feeling you're gonna catch flack for that one marcus mariota honorable honorable mention this week for i think you're outside of your mind i don't know if it's an honorable mention maybe it's in outrageous there you go there you go (laughs) that's more accurate my friend hope this helps god bless fantasy football has you covered for all things fantasy football this season and beyond we'll be back every tuesday for waiver wire ads weekly uh don't get too caught up remember it is week one no need to panic there's plenty of time to turn the season around with players that you have but also don't get attached to your roster because there's players on other people's teams that you can trade for that could also turn around your season we'll be back on sunday for week two action we will retool the show a little bit to focus more on rankings uh giving you kind of like what we did here for the waiver wire uh our top fives from quarterbacks wide receivers running backs for the week and then uh we'll even add in some more of your start sick questions because we know those are important for you guys out there there are many things a man can do with his time but none are better than this god bless you And God bless fantasy football.